In this lesson, we're going to continue on with our introduction to functions by looking at the next part of working with functions, the function call. Let's go back to our program we created in the last lesson, functions1.py. Can you remember we have two function definitions, one function to square a number and another function to count the number of vowels in a string. So let's see how to use these functions in a program. We'll start out with the square function. We'll ask the user to enter a number. We'll get that number using the input function. Then we'll create another variable called num squared. And here's where we will call the function with our piece of data. When we call a function, the data that is provided to the function is called the argument. And it's very important in a function call that the argument matches the parameter in the function definition. So that if our function definition calls for a number to be passed in, then that is actually what the argument will be, is a numeric value. Without that, then everything pretty much falls apart. So here's the call to square with a number, the variable num, which will hold a numeric value. And then what happens is at the place where the function is called, the function definition is executed. So return number times number is executed. The value that's returned from the function then replaces the function call. So this value, whatever it is, depending on the number that the user enters, then replaces the function call and then is assigned to the variable num squared. And then we can display the result like so. So let's give it a try. Let's exit and save. And then call the program. We'll do a simple one, 2 squared. 2 squared equals 4. Let's run it again. This time let's do 12. 12 squared equals 144. So that's how the function call works. A function call can go any place that an expression is expected. So we could put it inside a print function, and we can put it on the right-hand side of an assignment statement, and we can use it in a more complex expression also. And we'll look at other examples with more complex function calls as we go through the course. Now let's exercise the numVals function. So let's comment out our code for working with the square function. Now this time we're going to ask the user enter a string. And we'll call our variable str, and it will just be equal to input. And then we'll say there are plus string. Now this call is a little more complex because I want to make sure that we convert our number returned from numVals to a string. So I'll tell you what, let's not use the variable str, that can be kind of confusing. Let's use strng. You'll notice that I am purposely trying to avoid using the name of the parameter as the name of the variable where we collect the return value of the function. And I'm doing that on purpose to emphasize that it doesn't have to be the same. The parameter is just a variable name. It's a placeholder for a value. Just like strng is the same thing. It's a placeholder for a value in this case, a string value. So there is no real correspondence between the parameter name and the name of the variable that either holds the value or is used in the function call. What does matter, though, is that the data that is used as the argument is the type of data that we defined for the parameter. Otherwise, we can get either strange results or downright errors in our program. So let's review what we've done here before we run the program. We prompt the user to enter a string. We get their input and store it in the variable strng. Then we call the function with the argument strng. It will execute its code, return a count. That return value will replace the function call. It will be converted to string so that it will match up with the rest of the string, and then we'll display the number of vowels. So let's exit and save. Let's clear the screen. And we'll call it. 
So we'll do a simple one. Hello. There are two in the string. All right, so we left out the word vowels. So let's go back. Let's fix that real quick. There we go. Exit and save. Let's run it again. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Hello has two vowels. Let's try one more example. Hello world. There are three vowels in the string, and that's correct. E, O, and O. So in this lesson, we've learned how to perform the function call. And that's where we ask the program to execute a function definition and provide the required data for that function. We're ready to move on now to the next lesson where we're going to look at function definitions that have multiple parameters. Both of the function definitions we've seen so far, square and numVals, have had one parameter. Number for square and string for numVals. But function definitions can have multiple parameters. In the next lesson, we're going to see how to do that.